Hi everyone, welcome back. In our previous video, we started a very interesting discussion about the major two differences which help us to understand how Cython can provide the performance boost. Our last point was dynamic versus static typing, where we discussed the CDEF keyword. We will continue the discussion in this video. Before proceeding further, I want to mention an important point here. The important difference between dynamic and static variables is that static variables with the C types have C semantics, which changes the behavior of assignment. It also means these variables follow C casting rules. If you remember the example we mentioned in the previous video, where A equal to B copies the integer data at B to the memory location reserved for A. This means that A and B refer to the independent entities and can evolve separately. Inside a function, seed of statements are intended and the static variables declared are local to that function. All of these are valid uses of CDEF to declare local variables inside a function. You can see an example code here. First is the normal way to define the CDEF variable, but in the second one, we utilized the CDEF block. One another thing you should keep in mind is that Cython supports the const keyword instead of the C static keyword because the C static keyword is used to declare a variable whose lifetime extends to the entire lifetime of a program. It is not a valid Cython keyword, so we cannot declare C static variables in Cython. We can declare different kind of variables that C supports, like pointers, stack allocated C arrays, and function pointers, etc. Cython supports the full range of C declarations, even the cryptic tongue twisters like this one, which we can read as arrays of pointers to function pointers that return function pointers. For example, to declare a function that takes a function pointer as its only one argument and returns another function pointer, we could say something like this one. cdef integer into function pointer inside the integer into another function pointer which returns an integer. Don't put too much pressure on your mind. We will explore that in more detail in our later videos of this series. So be connected and don't forget to like this video. Great. Now, let's talk about the automatic type inference in Cython. Studying typing with CDEF is not the only way to statically type variables in Cython. It also performs automatic type inference for untyped variables inside the bodies of function and methods. By default, it infers variable types only when doing so cannot change the semantics of the code. Just take a look at this example function named auto underscore infer. Here, Cython types the literals 1 and 3 plus 4j and the variables a, c, and r as general Python objects even though these types have obvious corresponding C types. Cython conservatively assumes that the integer A may not be representable as a long type of variable in C, so times it as a Python object with the Python semantics. Automatic inference is able to infer that the variable B is type of double in C and proceeds accordingly. To the end user, it is as if B is a regular Python object, but Cython treats it as a C double for performance. By using the infer underscore types compiler directive, we can give Cython more freedom to infer types in cases that may change semantics. For example, when integer addition may result in overflow. To enable the type inference for a function, we can use the decorator from the infer underscore types as you can see in this example. Because infer underscore types is enabled for the infer underscore dec function, 
The variable a is typed as a c long, b is a double as before, and both c and r are c-level complex variables. But one thing you should consider is that, when enabling inferendoscope types, we are taking responsibility to ensure that integer operations don't overflow and that semantics don't change from the untyped version. Now, let's talk about the C pointers in Cython. We can declare the C pointers by using the Cython's syntax and semantics like these examples. You can see here, the static symbol can be declared contiguous to the type or to the variable itself. Although the pointerness is linked with the variable, not the type, like this one. If we write that statement in this way, it will declare an integer pointer x and a non-pointer integer y, and Cython will issue a warning when compiling error-prone declarations such as this. That's how we can reference variables as pointers. But dereferencing pointers in Cython is different than in C, because the Python language already uses the asteric args and asteric asteric coargs syntax to allow arbitrary positional and keyword arguments and to support function arguments on packing. Cython doesn't provide the asteric syntax to dereference a C pointer. Instead, we index into the pointer at location 0 to dereference a pointer in Cython. This syntax also works to dereference a pointer in C. For example, suppose we have a hot underscore pizza variable which is the double type of C and a C pointer named topping. We can assign hot underscore pizza's address to topping using the address of operator like this. We can now assign to hot underscore pizza through topping using our indexing at zero to dereference syntax like this one. And we can access topping's reference the same way. Alternatively, we can use the cython.operator.dereference function like operator to dereference a pointer. Great, that's it for now. We explored various things about Cython's CDEF, how to define variable types, how automatic type inference works in Cython, and we also talked about the pointers in Cython. I think that's enough for this video. In our next video, we will understand how statically and dynamically typed variables can be mixed together to get more performance along with the ease. So stay tuned. If you like the content of this video, thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so you will never miss any fantastic video in the future. Thanks for watching.